Hello, it's Saturday. We're going to do some Cisco lab study stuff. Specifically, we're going to upgrade our copy of Viral uh, from 1.3 to 1.5. So let me get an agenda up. I've got an agenda, a couple of things I want to show you on the screen here. I've done, I've done my research here, I think. And I've got a plan in place to do this upgrade, uh, an efficient use of time here. So here's the, uh, let's get, well, first of all, um, wallpaper of the day. <clears throat> I hesitate to post anything like this before, but now, you know, it's kind of a spoiler, but, you know, they've been playing ads for the, um, the Last Jedi is coming out on Tuesday, and yes, I will be downloading it that day to watch, uh, probably from Amazon, but it's coming out Tuesday, and they've been splashing all this stuff on TV and commercials, so, you know, this is, uh, all hands off in terms of images to show on the screen. This is one of my favorites from the new movie. But anyway, here's the chat window, and here is the plan for today. I'm going to pull up the agenda that I've developed. I've already got viral running, my current version, which is 1.3. Well, I thought I had the agenda up. Let me pull that up here. These are all out on, of course, on the Google Drive for the channel. If you're not following us yet, give us a follow and check out these links below. Uh, to the Google Drive share, all kind of goodies out there uh, that you're, you can use. But anyway, these are, I have no meat chunks today, but uh, this is what we're going to vlog about and talk about and stream about. Viral 1.5 release notes review. So the, the release notes were uh, put out, I believe it was yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. And the download was made available yesterday. I went ahead and downloaded it, even though I don't need to. I downloaded the full OVA. I'm not doing a new install, but that's what you would do if you're doing a full download. The size is, uh, let's see, 5.54 gig, and that is not all the base images either. Something you have to download after you, you know, deploy viral. But I did that just to see how big it was and to see if I could download on the first day. There was no problem. It took a little while, but uh, not an issue. But we're doing a, they also, do, you know, they also put out the release notes, which I have here. I actually have them in a PDF on my desktop. So we're going to open those real quick. Not going to go into detail. I've already read through all this for you. So if you're doing an install or an upgrade, actually, if you're doing an upgrade, like what I'm going to do in just a few moments on the stream, then, you know, you probably, I won't say you don't need to read the release. Always standard disclaimer, you know, don't go by what I say. Definitely read them for yourself. But hey, if you're not too concerned and you're just doing an in-place upgrade from 1.3 to 1.5 like I am, then, you know, you probably just watch the first part of this video and you have what you need. But I read through it and I made some notes here of things that were important to me. And again, much about the release of this 1.5 is about actually installing the product. It's the boring stuff. Right, so not a lot of new real bells and whistles to this particular upgrade. So I consider, I guess, a minor upgrade in terms of features. Um, and again, a couple of things it says, uh, in-place upgrade is not supported unless you are on 1.3. If you are on 1.2.83 or earlier, you're gonna have to do a new install. Also, you're no longer supported on 1. You know, unless you're running 1.3.296, uh, you're no longer supported. So, you know, if you're on 1.2, you need to do the upgrade anyway, essentially. So if you're on 1.3, there's some caveats, some features, you know, like if you've edited certain things you've edited, just read through that file uh, to check. If you haven't really done any customization to your system, then you can pretty much, you shouldn't be worried about going from 1.3 to 1.5. If you've done a number of tweaks, like to the networking, to the uh, ports that you use, etc. Then read the release notes. You may not want to upgrade. An upgrade, an in-place upgrade, may not be supported. So you may have to do a full install anyway. So if you've done any kind of customization to your system, to your viral install, read those release notes. Okay. Um, there is a link. It says uh, in the release notes. Get viral.cisco.com to see video training material, online training material. That is a dead link right now, so it goes nowhere. 
Um, so don't worry about that. Um, hey, you know, maybe you can watch this. Use my video for now, my stream. Um, just a couple of notes I had from reading through all the release notes. Uh, UWM, there are some basic, they, they tend to do this each release. They do a little bit of cleanup of the UWM, uh, fix a few little bugs, and validate some of the data entry or, or things you might do that weren't there before. That's all good. I like that. I use the UWM a lot. Some people, you know, may exclusively use the UWM. Some people may exclusively use the VM Maestro. Some people do a mix of both. I am of the last category. I primarily use the UWM because, um, I don't know, just sometimes the clicking and the rendering in the VM Maestro isn't really clean. And on the UWM, you know, you can, it's a lot more, some of the steps are a little more manual. Uh, you have to, you know, like doing a packet capture, you have to go click, find the interface, so like capture on that interface, et cetera. But to me, I found that a little less time consuming than having to, than using the VM Maestro. That may change with this release. I, I'll try out both and see. But uh, yeah, there's several uh, cleanups. One thing you cannot do, there's some things you can no longer do in the UWM, uh, which they're saying apparently you should not be able to do anymore. And that is like changing Ethernet zero. That basically requires a reinstall anyway. So they took that out of the UWM, although it's a little confusing because they said some changes you can do to the networking through the viral underscore setup, you know, running that from the, the terminal here. That's my uh, viral uh, VM, by the way. Uh, there's some new tabs in the system configuration, which I have that bolded because I want to come back and check that out after we do the upgrade. Um, They've done some minor changes to the UWM admin account. You can still do most everything, log in as guest, launch your simulation, make changes to your simulation. But some changes to the actual system itself, you're going to have to be logged in as UWM admin, okay? Which I am going to probably have to do in a moment. Yeah, I've got the screen up, but yeah, we'll do that in a sec. Bug fixes. Um, this is really, to me, what is... Um, the main reason I'm upgrading is, uh, you know, one, to just to give back to the community. And, you know, uh, this channel has been a lot about viral, labbing in viral, et cetera. And, you know, I want to give an opportunity to, I want to kind of be on the leading edge of viral and anything that goes wrong, you know, maybe I can share that with the community and save you some time, right? And that's hopefully some of the value I add to this, this particular channel. I did do a backup. So, of course, of course, of course, always. Oh, it's running again, which is okay. Uh, but, yeah, I did a time machine backup. So, you know, no matter what happens, <laughs> we'll always be able to do a restore, which I have had to do once in the past. I don't know what I did, but my viral install got really screwed up, and even a new install wasn't working the way I expected. So I just went to and did a restore of the time machine and everything was fine after that. And I think I skipped that particular version upgrade and waited on the next one. Um, but, you know, each, each release has gotten a little better. But, yeah, there are a lot of bug fixes. Um, I will come back to that. Well, I'll go ahead and mention that. Yeah, some of them included, I noticed, uh, some patches for Spectre and Meltdown on the CPU. So, hey, that's great. You know, I'm a little... I'm a little concerned about that just because I know in the real world and, you know, when I say the IRL, uh, there have been a lot of patches for this, but there's some concern that this actually may affect performance. So hopefully that will not be the case here. I'll definitely have some feedback on that if I notice a lot of performance differences. But those are some of the main bug fix fixes is they do some CP patching there. You have to do a salt master update. Um, System scaling. By the way, what I wanted to do, guys, actually, is I'm going to sort of launch. I may actually go ahead and launch the install while I read through the rest of this. Um, because, as I understand, there is some downloading. It's going to take some time to finish the install. So let me just take a pause right here. And I'm going to jump ahead and then jump back. Okay, so don't worry. I'm going to come back to the uh, all the caveats and things like that. But uh, there is a there is another document here that I need to load real quick. 
and that kind of jumps to the upgrade the yeah in place upgrade so you have the release notes and then at some point if you say i want to do an in place upgrade you have to jump off to another link that is this link here uh give viral info upgrade 1.3 um there really is not a lot here guys it's really pretty simple if you're doing an upgrade so what I'm going to do is first step, log into the UWM. Now there's a reason here that I'm using Chrome and not Brave or Safari. I will get to that in a moment. But let's log in. This you do have to do is UWM admin. Uh, no such repo. Okay, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. Uh, not, I, my link to the UWM takes me to a repo. And it's saying no such repo. Uh, so let's just log into viral. Yeah, here we go. Uh, we're not going to worry about that at the moment. So we want to go to viral server, salt configuration and status. You've probably done this before. Notice there's a live network collection engine upgrade here already. We can see in the overview. Disable this, go away, please. Um, and it's saying check under last social contact, displace today's date after page refresh. And that is today's date, so that's good. Check that the host returns all green check marks, and it does. And we're going to do now a new salt masters. Okay. Click reset keys and ID. This is pretty. Pretty simple. We've done this before. Uh, set the appropriate new salt masters. So in the US, I've got four servers I can choose. Uh, master sign public key. EFTP.pub. Changing the master sign key. To, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to do that. It's okay. Okay. So notice these are different than what's here because we have to use the 51. So I'm going to put in these four. OK. And then click Reset and wait for the page to refresh. And we'll drink a little coffee while it's happening. Hope this goes correctly. I'm actually missing my customer email address. Um, I probably need to put that in. Let's see what happens. I don't think I'm giving anything away here on stream, guys, because it's only a partial private key. So. Hope everyone's having a good uh, Saturday. If you're doing some uh, studying this weekend, uh, salt minion service stopped, keep your place, stay removed, fail, wait for good connection, make to establish contact, okay? Cisco contact, this may be temporary. Please make sure Vile Service Connect Internet. It is. The minion key, I always love that. So let's do let's do this, and I think... I believe that's what I used. And we will try it again. Man, this prompt just keeps coming up, doesn't it? Uh, reset, check status now. Wait for page, click sticks. Okay. If your viral PE service configured received DHCP addressing, which it is. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch over here.
So said maybe tear result or maybe check resetting the configuration. Okay, master key removed. Status check is failing. Let's do current configuration. Okay, let's do another check status now and see what happens. Hey, we're good. Last successful contact. And we are using the new Salt Master servers. Okay, that's pretty simple, right? And then we go here, run the following commands to align default settings. Okay. Robots can to receive, perform the following steps. And I believe it is. Uh, why is my pace not working? I'm not sure. Put that in here. Fine, you make me type it out. Yeah, I'm not sure why Pace is not working there. Pseudo Crudini. Not Houdini, Crudini. First name server none. So they asked me to take these out. And we'll do the same for second name server. Close console and return to OK. Well, I'm not using SSH, so. All right, choose upgrade type. Navigate to viral system server upgrade. And the system will reload a couple times while it's sinks news. This is expected. Uh, now we're seeing the, um, before these were all green except the live network collection engine. Now these are showing uh, amber. So these are now available to be released. So that's good. Type upgrades, complete, complete speed. Uh, we're going to go... Yeah, I, I want to do the image images separately, and I will come back to that. Um, so we're going to do core. Select. Click select for core upgrade. Click enable maintenance mode. And then... Maintenance mode has been enabled. And we do not get it saying here that you need to click enable to convert. Okay, click upgrade to version 1.3 to 1.5. And away we go, folks. And it's saying the upgrade depending on hardware, patient, and wait for system prompt for reboot. Do not refresh the page during the upgrade process. All right, that's where I wanted to get, guys. So we're just gonna wait. Uh, I think essentially what it's doing, uh, we can see the progress here. The packages and the progress. Yeah, this is uh, pretty similar to what we've seen before in the previous uh, in-place upgrade processes. So that's good. Um, so now let me go back to in-depth on the install caveats or the release notes, notes from the release guide. Okay. So yeah, we're talking about bug fixes. Uh, there is a salt master update, which we've already done system scaling. So there may have been information about this before. Maybe I just didn't read it. This is in terms of performance, CPU, memory, etc. Uh, by default, 
It turns out the system essentially oversubscribes you on the memory by, by a factor of two, and it oversubscribes on the CPU by a factor of three. You can change that factor as I understand, but I'm leaving that at default. Um, of course, it does mention um, heavier images than iOS V, and I've noticed this too. If I load, you know, you have your iOS V images, which I'm using now, but in the past, I've used other images, um, you know, that have come off of, for example, uh, actual hardware. Um, and I've loaded them into viral and noticed, yeah, they do take longer. So I tend to try to use iOS V and iOS V L2 when I can. Uh, and for most of the labbing I've done right now, the INE labs, that has been just fine. Uh, obviously, those are going to be a little more efficient running in viral and if you use those heavier images, it will impact your node capacity and your topology capacity, what you're actually going to be able to load in your topology, right? Uh, also mentions protocol. So, yes, it mentions specifically if you're doing MPLS, other routing protocols, that is also going to impact your actual node limit, of course. It makes sense, right? The more processes, the more processes you run on a node, on a virtual machine, the more CPU and memory is going to take. Makes sense. Now, this is something that I've kind of figured out, but I have not seen it spelled out before, which I think is great that they're documenting this, at least for this version, is the staggered launches. What they mention is, in the release notes, uh, let me pull that part of it up because this is pretty good stuff here, I thought. And I thought it was well written and described. Again, I'm using a PDF. I want to download it. Uh, so it's talking about system scaling is a section I just went over. Um, but it says, at this time, when launching large simulation, approaching the node limit or system memory CPU capacity, users must stagger the launch manually. You know, this reminds me, and I've commented this on stream, and I've showed you this on this stream. You know, when we launch a large, you know, a big topology, it reminds me of the days when, you know, you would launch a new... Uh, you know, when you're launching a router in person, uh, it's funny, I have a little story about this. Um, I had a coworker who would sometimes, um, we, you know, we had an area, sort of a staging area for new routers, new switches, etc. And we could set things up there with console cables and then come back to our desk, which the, you know, the desk I was in a partition and, and kind of a crowded area. And we could do things that way. And then that way there wasn't a lot of disturbance in the area. But I had coworkers sometimes, and I've done this before too, where you actually bring the router, the switch into, I mean, even a 3850, if you put that thing on your desk and you boot it up, you know, you have the rocket takeoff sound, right? The launch, I mean, and it's loud, right? Imagine doing a stack that can create a disturbance in a shared area, right? So... Um, that's equivalent to me of when you launch these images inside of, and I've seen this in VMware too. You know, when you first boot up a host and you set, uh, you know, you can set, you know, the virtual machine boot order and dependencies on an ESX host, right? But if you don't, and all the virtual machines are set to launch, you know, to start up on PowerOn, I mean, you see the CPU spike, right? It's just, and that's what's happening here if you have a large topology. So I like the idea of the staggered launch. It reminds me of uh, ESX and vSphere where you tell it, first launch this virtual machine, then launch this, these virtual machines, these three at the same time, then launch this virtual machine. It's saying do the same for your large topology. So there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, avoid booting up every node when the simulation first starts. Instead, stagger the launch so the subset of nodes is booting up at once. This is not automatic, of course, and I know, pretty sure you've seen that, right? So, what you want to do is um, in VMI, sure, you said the exclude from launch setting, right? So, good stuff. I like that. Uh, so, that's that's what we'll talk about. You know, there's not much else to say there. Uh, the condition is all called CPU starvation. Apparently, some of the images do not react well to CPU starvation. And I have seen this. 
I've seen this in my environment where I've launched and uh, relaunched, you know, shut down a simulation, brought back up a simulation. Sometimes a second or third time, if all the nodes are coming up at once, this CPU starvation con condition, I've seen it, and it, the system does not recover well from it. Sometimes it doesn't recover well, and I've had to just shut viral down completely, sometimes reboot the whole system completely. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, the instructions are there. Then there are some caveats that are mentioned. In other words, these are things that are known bugs or caveats or issues with 1.5. Um, and I reviewed all these. The ones that stood out to me, uh, there are a lot, by the way, which I think is good in a way. I mean, they've already sort of identified the issues or probably already working on them. Um, it, it tells me at least that they have done a considerable amount of testing. Uh, even, you know, some of the new images there are caveats with, uh, cluster mode, etc. So that's good. That's a good sign. Uh, I appreciate seeing that. So what we have here on the caveats that are were of interest to me, you know, I'm a simple user. Um, I don't have really much customization, if any at all. I'm running a simple uh, configuration. But these stood out to me. Um, this has been a complaint, I know, by some, of being able to run multiple project simulations simultaneously. That is not a feature of Viral PE Edition. They, I don't remember which version it was that they kind of disabled that, but some people were upset by it. If you want to do this, of course, that hasn't changed in 1.5, you need to get the, uh, it, uh, what's the product called? I forget. Uh, here, I'll tell you in just a second. You need to get the, well, shoot, it's not in that agenda. One of the recent blogs where I came out may be in this one. Yeah, well, I don't have the information there, but uh, whatever the supported partner version is or that you have to get through a Cisco partner reseller, you can run multiple project simulations in that version, none in PE. Uh, there are some curious issues with NTP. I have seen this. I've been very frustrated about this. Thank you for at least acknowledging it. Um, this one doesn't apply to me, but if your time zone is east of GMT, you might see an issue with the time zone. But this, when NTP sync fails, which I have seen many times, I've struggled with this, especially if you're working on NTP in the lab, um, yeah, this is a pain, a royal pain. Um, fortunately, they do give some details about how to sort of recover or fix this, which I have not seen before. Thank you. Um, let me pull that up in the caveats document, which I may have closed already for some reason. Um, yeah, so if you see this NTP issue... Let's just search in the box. Okay, when the local time of the host computer it runs VM, yeah, that's the other one I talked about. Now, there's this caveat. NTP does not sync under certain circumstances. How about many circumstances, okay? If this happens, please open a new thread on the viral CLN community forum. Basically, that is our avenue for support, right? The community forum. This in the personal edition, that's what your support is, you know. Um, I'm going to copy this link, by the way, into this document. Let's put that as a meat chunk. When you need support for a viral PE. Um, what is that link? Okay, learning Cisco Learning Network. All right. So that is your, you know, that is where you can go. I should also put the link for these release notes, actually. I know I've done that before. Uh, but let me pull that up for you guys. Let's see if that, yeah. So this is the... One dot five. 
Yeah, so you'll have this. I'll paste that in later to the, uh, in, in the Twitch. So yeah, if, if that happens though, if that happens, there's a workaround. So there is hope, right? Um, you can restart NTPD using this command and then check with NTPQ slash the same way you would on any, um, you know, Linux machine, right? And I've done this before. Uh, the same way you would on a router, right? Sometimes it was, sometimes it was sometimes necessary <laughs> to kill the NTPD process manually. So that is good to know. I'm going to actually mark this because this is kind of important. Um, here's an excerpt for NTP issues. So you can always come back to this if you want to just jump and see what this was. But yeah, I like that. Okay. Um, going back to the caveats here uh, in my notes. Um, yeah, this is another thing. It said that sometimes you can have an issues when extracting configurations using Safari. There were several sort of Mac related issues here. And I know Cisco tests on the Mac. I'm pretty sure they do because, you know, if you've ever been to a Cisco sales meeting or any Cisco sponsored or related event, <laughs> you see a lot of Cisco staff use, uh, and engineers use Mac. And, and I'm glad I do too. I love Mac. And I think there's a reason behind that. I'm not gonna go into a lot of that now. Uh, that is, uh, may spark a lot of debate. But you see a lot of network engineers using Mac, so they vetted a lot of these things with Mac, which is great. So basically they're saying use Firefox or Chrome to avoid these situations. I have not been using Firefox. Or, again, this is with a UWM. Um, I've not been using Firefox and Chrome all the time. I'm going to start, though. And you will notice here that, in the, that that's what I'm using to do the upgrade, okay? By the way, just checking on the progress... Um, good. It looks like we've gotten through the vinstall, our vi refresh, vi vinstall salt, vinstall upgrade. We're doing the actual upgrade, which is good. Making good progress here. I do like, sort of like the logging uh, display that they do. It is actually helpful. Okay, so getting back to the caveats again. Um, you'll see this later too, but there are several live visualization known ca caveats. Uh, yeah, that's one reason I still use the UWM. And it sounds like from this that I may continue to use the UWM because the live vis visualization is still a little too glitchy or um, unpredictable for me. Um, when, I, when I do want to make a change or select something or start a cap, I don't want to waste a lot of time. I don't need the picture. What is the most efficient way to do that? And at this stage, it is still the UWM for me. Um, and you, by UWM, I, I'm assuming everyone here knows that, but that's a use, uh, user workstation manager. This, it's the web-based um, interface. Uh, there are some other issues with Internet Explorer. Um, I, I don't ever really use Internet Explorer with uh, the UWM. Um, but again, it emphasizes... Hey, we got a new um, follower. Thank you, 101 Canadian. Appreciate that. Um, welcome to the Land Tamer stream. But yeah, there are issues with IE. So again, they re-emphasize in these notes, use Firefox or Chrome. So yeah, you told me once, you told me twice. They actually tell you again in the caveats. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, there are also another caveat, making multiple system configuration or update changes simultaneously. In other words... And I've been guilty of this. This this would seem to be reasonable, seem to be common sense. But as engineers, we're impatient, right? Like sometimes I've come in here and I have done a refresh. You know, I get some of these processes in the past taking a long time. And I've gotten impatient. Uh, I've tried to do multiple things at once. It's saying, do not do that. It's saying, be patient. Let everything finish. 
Uh, don't try to do multiple things simultaneously, like, like open another UWM. For example, in this case, I could open another UWM instance in a browser and start trying to upgrade my images. Um, bad idea. Yeah, upgrade, do all your upgrade packages uh, individually. Oh, yeah. That, again, uh, as you saw from this first screen, so this was a caveat, right? It said that there's a known caveat. Uh, if you were to do the full, any, see, any additional Cisco LXC and Docker image will be upgraded. Essentially what it's saying, uh, while you could do this, it recommend there may be some caveats. It's saying do your core first, then come back and upgrade your individual images. So that's what we're doing. A couple of OS 10 user caveats, and in, in particular, um, Sierra was mentioned in here. I'm not running Sierra yet. I don't know about you, but I have held back from running Sierra if for n no other reasons than they've taken away Telnet, right, which I use for labbing. So, but some of these could be uh, also other versions of OS 10. but it's saying uh, you might have some issues with scroll bars in the VM Maestro. We're going to come back and do this, by the way, because uh, just in case it gives you a workaround. There is also an OS 10 VM Maestro install caveat. This was especially had some instructions for Sierra. If we have a problem with this, we'll come back and fix it. Uh, also, it says the CPU hog message. If you watch my stream, you have seen this uh, multiple times. So. I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's, it's acknowledging here that that is nothing more than a cosmetic error. Uh, so we got our extra NTP. Yep, we put those in. Good. All right, what's next on the agenda here? Uh, where is my... Yeah. So yeah, we're doing the in-place upgrade. Here's what we're going to do. Once the in-place upgrade is complete, uh, we will come back and do a VM Maestro upgrade. Again, I don't use it much, but I want to ensure that that goes well. 1.2 to 1.3, I had some VM Maestro problems. Okay. So I want to ensure that this is working. So afterwards, this is my validation checklist. We will load a simulation. Uh, we want to make sure images are upgraded. Then we will load a simulation via UWM. Then we will close and load a new simulation via VM Maestro. Okay, that's kind of our validation checklist. So, uh, If you have any questions, post them in the chat. That is pretty much the plan for today. Uh, we've already started, like I said. Um, when you get to the end of the release notes, it tells you uh, the install instructions, and the install instructions takes you to a different document which um, I have loaded somewhere, or may have already closed it. Yeah, let me find that one. Barrel 1.5, actually. Let's go to our link. Known issues and caveats, yeah. Upgrade installation procedure. Maybe it was at the end? Um, I I'm curious to see what the comments are. While we're waiting on Viral here to, to finish doing the core install, we're keeping an eye on this, right? On the upgrade. I'm curious to see. I looked the other day. There were not many comments. Um, not able to download for the link provided my invoice. Can an entitlement error? I've gotten that before. Um, contact Cisco Learning Network twice by email this week with no response. This is one complaint I have about um, <laughs> this has been an issue with me in the past, right? So I don't remember why. I think so I think what happened was my, yeah, it was the last time I renewed my license. And I tried to just download 
viral install by default. Um, a fresh install. And I tried to use my key, and my key was not working. My license key. So really the only way to con that I knew of, the only way to contact uh, Cisco Learning Network support was to send this email, right? Which I did. I'm going to tell you guys, it took about a month to get a response. What they did is they ended up issuing a new license key, I believe. Or they reissued a license key for me um, to resolve the issue. But first of all, the first response took about two weeks. And they did respond and they did have a suggestion and I emailed back. You know, I would love to find that uh, email uh, conversation. And, and this really, it kind of peeved me quite a bit. Um, but let me show you what I'm talking about here. Just so I can clarify, and I, I want to properly represent what happened, right? I don't want to uh, smear anyone unnecessarily or um, inaccurately criticize, right? Especially on stream, you know, I want to represent what, uh, what actually happened. Uh, but let me find the email... Yeah, license key. They're sure enough uh, quick to send you uh, notifications, right? Okay, here's the stream. All right, I want to show this to you guys, right? This is back in April 23rd of 2017. I'm having issues downloading my viral... Um, key file. Each time I download it, it is zero bytes in size. That's what happened. So I think what happened is uh, I had, this was by this time, you know, there would have been a gap in labbing time, right? I hadn't labbed in quite a while. So what I did is uh, I deleted everything and I started from scratch and I went back to go and download my license key file and it would not download. It said uh, zero bytes. One moment, guys. I need uh, someone out of the door. Yeah, so I tried to download my file, and no go, right? Um, so then what happened? Make sure my audio is, yeah. So then, three days later, still no response. Now, first of all, that's a long time to wait if you're trying to lab, right? So... Three days later, and then I pinged them again, all right? Hey, I still not got a response. Please help me out. Then I got a email back from Cisco. Sorry for the delayed response. We're checking into it and let you know once we have a solution. That was the 26th. On the 28th, we resolved the issue on our end, and you should be able to download it now. Let me know if you continue to have issues. Okay, and it did work, all right? This is not the incident in question. There was another incident that took a lot longer. That's why I wanted to check the email because I wanted to properly represent what was happening, right? So basically this, was, this issue was resolved in five days. Um, there was another issue though, and I would have to find it, that took about a month. Yeah, I can't uh, find that at this time. But anyway, when you're laughing, that's a long time, right? So that's what happened. They said trying to call center phone number and being told that the team has no phone support. Um, that makes sense. 
Okay, good. So it looks like the same day. That was 11.47. Um, a couple hours later, he said, yeah, he was able to open a case with help phone support on Cisco Certification and Communities Online Support Forum site. Okay, then. The dev team handles technical questions in the ceiling of four or five. For pre-sales, blah, blah, blah. Ceiling store support team. The best support channel for that kind of problem is actually just send an email. Okay, good. Well, that's good. They got a response. Um, I fixed the broken link. Is this talking about get viral? Yeah. Yeah, that's the um, documentation site that I was saying before. So it doesn't looks like, look like they have fixed that link, but someone else has provided it. So thank you for that. Um, okay, this is cool. I've not seen this yet. Make sure you're vaccinated. Uh, nice little marketing thing there. Hey, FTD, uh, one half year, no labbing. Oh, man. Are you uh, working on a specific cert? What's, what cert are you working on? Oh, you're talking about me not labbing. Uh, yeah, I went for a while without labbing. Uh, there was a gap there where, it, I don't know, I, uh, I was moving. Uh, life, other events, personal events were happening in life. So, yeah, I went for a while there where I'm working on the CCI routing and switching, and I neglected any labbing at all. So that's bad, one. I mean, I would think in your career you would at least always be labbing something, right? Always be learning or labbing or working on something, um, whether it's coding or switching or, F you know, I'm working on F5, whatever, right? <laughs> yeah, you should always be. And when you go a year and a half, when you haven't done any sort of learning, you just, of course, you're, you're learning on your job, but uh, you're not doing any other projects uh, in your personal time. Yeah, that's a long time to go, man. So, hey, man, get back into it. FTD, maybe this channel will, uh, you know, give you a little boost, um, motivation boost to keep going. But I've been in that boat before, so I know what that's like. Um, and so... But yeah, I'm back into it now, pretty much. Uh, I, I'm not labbing at the moment. Oh, Cisco Networks Services Orchestrator. That is cool. Um, I want to look that up. We've got time. We're waiting on Viral to finish installing, right? Cisco Network Services Orchestrator. NSO. Um, you never learn anything on the marketing site, right? This is cool. Cool stuff. Um, resources. Success stories, white papers, product overviews. Net rounds. This was an acquisition, right? Okay. Tail F at a glance. Interesting. Cisco Elastic Services Controller. This is good stuff, man. I, I'm doing some work in the cloud right now, Azure. And, um, you know, it's all about orchestration, right? Repeatability. The NSO part is acquisition as well. It used to be TLF NCS. Oh, okay. TLF. Good deal. Yeah, that's how Cisco's trying to have been trying to position itself in the space right through acquisitions. Uh, man, that's good stuff. Let's 
So basically this says Cisco Orchestrate Assurance powered by NetRounds. NetConf and Yang, yeah. This is where I want to be. Uh, Cisco NSO basically getting a single API to the network, not as data center centric as ACI. Ah, okay. Yeah, as a matter of fact, part of the, you know, I've been studying for the written, CCIE route switch written, and the evolving technologies, and there was, I will be tested on uh, ACI in the data center and some components of that. It sounds like NSO is a more broad encompassing uh, product not just data center. Okay, here we go. Net round. Here's a nice pretty picture, right? Um, so you've got Cisco NSO, Smart SFP, Router Switch, Enode B, Reflectors. Oh, that's okay. Um, let me know. Did it not allow you to post the link? I'm I'm new to Netbot guys, so um, I'm going to open this up actually. Let's open this in a new browser when it Brave does that to me. What you're looking at is currently the Active Stata testing partner for them. Okay, sorry to FTD. Uh, it allowed me to post it, so uh, let's take a look at it. Intuit Services Orchestration, NFV, SDN, Network Configuration Applications Assurance. REST, oh, REST, NetConf, Java, Python, Erlang, CLI, Web User Interface. Applications engineers, service model, device model. This looks like good stuff, man. I would like to learn more about this. Uh, NetConf, REST, SNMP, CLI, et cetera, physical virtual networks, network apps. Nice. The box inside the middle is basically the tool. Gotcha. So, for example, NetConf in, NetConf out. To your device, to your services and devices. And thanks for sharing that. That's good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about orchestration. I actually um, attended recently uh, Scrum training. I need to go get my Scrum Master certification. I need to take the exam. But um, but yeah, Agile. You know, we're doing Agile uh, at our company. Um, Agile deployments in infrastructure as well. Uh, we're developing a methodology for that, and orchestration is exciting to me. Um, that's the future, right? Good stuff, man. But yeah, I did not see this before, so I'm going to paste this because um, this is... Remember there was a broken link? 1.5 install help site. Um, release notes link is broken. It says you build a high level data model in Yang. Apply some mapping code to their adapters. They call it NED, Yang based. And then having an adapter do a lot of different vendors. CLI wrappers native. Wow. Yeah, that's high level. So a little data in. Config to the devices out, transaction base. Yeah, nice. Very nice. That's uh, future stuff, man. Well, maybe for you it's present. Um, yes. Quad. I imagine that being a very expensive um, offering. Uh, I do imagine that to be the case. Let's check on our viral install. How's that going? Where did he go? Okay, we're still in vinstall grade. Not really worth for non-carriers, right? Yeah, probably carrier-based, right? Carrier. 
probably not a lot of enterprises large enough to so my search track good question um this particular track is routing switching you're quite at the beginning of, of your career okay um well i've been doing it for 20 plus years um I started out uh, doing help desk, then I did workstation support, uh, then I got into doing server support, uh, Microsoft server, some IBM AIX. Then from there, I kind of mi migrated to uh, v VMware, vSphere. And at that time, I was starting to venture into networking because I, th I thought, I, I took a management track as well, twice, and then... Decided I didn't want to be a manager twice and uh, started doing engineering again. And I, I, I started sort of specializing towards uh, vSphere. And at the company I was at, we were doing a lot of... That was, that was during the boom of uh, vSphere, VMware, and virtualization. Converting, converted countless physical servers to virtual during that time. I can't even count. There's so many. Anyway... During that time, I got more and more of an interest in networking. I've always had an interest in networking. But that's when I went at that time and got, uh, hey, thank you, uh, FTD, for the follow. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate all the support here. Yeah, the management of the evil side, that and sales, right? Usually that's one of those three. Yeah, yeah. At some point, you come to a fork in the road. You know, if you want to make more money, I need to go to management. Or sales, which always makes more money than the people who know what they're doing, right? And then you can do SME, you know, uh, specialization in engineering in one particular aspect. So I chose networking. At some point when I was doing vSphere, I said, man, I want to get into networking. That's what is the, that's the hardest part. That's the hardest, the most challenging. So I got my CCNA around that time. So around the same time, I can't remember if I got... My VCP or CCNA first. Um, might have been CCNA, I'm not sure. But then um, about three years ago, my I got the CCNP routing and switching. And as a matter of fact, my CCNP route switch expired uh, January 31st. So uh, I started out really strong, did a lot of reading on CCIE uh, in the beginning. Um, purchase INE materials, uh, yes, VCP, VMware Certified Professional. Um, I don't know if that's still the same, if that's still the case. They have a lot. They've also branched out certifications now, kind of like Cisco has. Um, but yeah, VCP. And then, uh, of course, CCMP. And then, um, hey, is that a, uh, you must be a subscriber to... I don't know, the Blood Trail emoticon. Uh, I wonder if that was from Ninja's channel. I, I watch a lot of Twitch, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, cool, cool emoji or emoticon, whatever. But yeah, so I've been um, working on CCIE for three years, and I am scheduled for the written in 92 days. Oh, Super Meat Boy. Yeah, I have watched uh, Super Meat Boy runs in um, uh, AGDQ and stuff like that. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool game. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm working on the route switch now. The first step, of course, you have to take a written. And then after you pass a written, you have two years to complete the lab exam. So that's, that's what I've been working on. And I love it. I love networking. But I do want to get into, uh, after I get the CCIE routing and switching, my plan within the next uh, year, hopefully, um, then I will be going for some more sort of autom automation, um, sort of take an automation track. Thank you. Appreciate that, FTD. Um, and in particular, you know, right now I'm working on in, in Azure, and I work with the F5. It may, may lead me to doing some Ansible or Python programming. And uh, that'll probably be my next focus, though, is Python programming. There are a lot of resources here uh, for Python. Uh, on, well, there's at least 
there's some good resources out there. But that is definitely a good good track to take. But yeah, in this, uh, so I've added this link, guys, uh, if you need to use this. Um, I like this basic summary of Viral PE here. And then... What's new in Viral PE? Faster, better, easier. Guided setup on first launch. No more guessing. Yes. Modify your Viral PE service configuration like a pro. <laughs> this is pretty good uh, stuff. Faster system parameter changes. System changes at a fraction of the time from previous release. Yes. That is a good summation, <clears throat> excuse me, in my view, of this particular version and the improvements in it. Flexibility, easier network setup. Connect simulations to a physical network, easy. Create the virtual networks. Set the simulation topology to use shared flat network. I am going to do this at some point. The next epidemic, make sure you're vaccinated. Prerequisites, give viral PE, install viral PE, learn viral PE. Let's see if this link works. I wonder if they did any, made any changes to this. Get started. I have to say, this is uh, improved too. I have not been to this tutorial site in a while, but it's looking pretty good. The product just keeps, it, it does keep getting better, and I'm really glad to see that. Um, I've not used Viral before. Do you like it? How do the V versions of OSV? Yes, they do. So, um, I, I do like it. I do really like Viral. I'll tell you the main reasons I like Viral. One is because um, you don't have to rely on any, you know, Cisco has restrictions on how to obtain their software, right? So before, before Viral, there were a number of options, but what I was using is GNS3. And for GNS3, I had to have, if I wanted to use their router software, routing protocols, I had to have a copy of the image from somewhere else, not from Cisco directly. Like you couldn't buy, for example, uh, I think until, until Viral was released, there wasn't really a legitimate way, uh, not a legitimate way, but there wasn't really an easy way as a personal user, not associated with any business or any company or any, you know, service contracts, through an employer, there wasn't a way for me directly to really obtain an image for labbing, for routing, and switching from Cisco directly. Now you can do that, of course, from the Cisco Learning Network, and Viral gives you that. That was really the main reason I got involved with Viral. Um, I'm not using uh Yeah, so that is a principal reason. Um, so some people will... Purchase a one-year subscription to Viral, which is typically $200. Usually you can find coupon codes um, for 15% off and things like that. Um, so you could purchase a one-year subscription to Viral, personal edition, download the images. Then you can take those images and you can use them anywhere you want. Like you can use them in a lot of people use EVNG, um, which I do have installed. I'm not using currently. Uh, you can take those same images, you know, the iOS V, and you can put them in, um, uh, you know, not just iOS V, though. You get ASA V images. You can get Nexus images, Nexus 9000. So you're, you're, you know, for one basically cost of 200 bucks, you get all these images that you can now do pretty much whatever you want to with, subject to your licensing agreement. But, you know, you can put them in GNS3. You can put them in EVNG, et cetera. I have continued to renew my subscription uh, because I'm actively working on the CCI routing and switching, and I want to get all the latest versions of the images too. At some point, I'll probably stop subscribing to Viral, 
and just subscribe later on as I need new images or as I want to get upgrades to the software, etc. But another reason I got viral is because uh, when I was using GNS3, studying for the CCMP, and I was doing switching and routing labs and things like that, the amount of time it would take sometimes to do setup and the bugs that I sometimes found using different images, of course, at that time I was not using the viral images, the IOSV, I was using images that I would copy from um, other devices. Um, going back even farther, I actually started out with a physical lab when I was studying for CCNA. You know, I had a couple of switches that I bought, and I had a Layer 3 switch, a 3500 series switch, like the cheapest switch you can get that did Layer 3, I bought. Um, and this is going back years ago. Uh, but yeah, I would copy images off of there. I had access to other images, and I would put them in GNS3, but it was sometimes buggy. And some things didn't work. Um, so that was another reason I went to viral. I invested the money. Instead of doing things for free in GNS3, I thought this money is going to be worth it because I want to optimize all the time that I have to do real labbing, studying the protocols. I don't want to spend a lot of time tinkering, building labs in GNS3 or even G or whatever. I just want it to work. So... For me, that was that was worth it. I also uh, another motive for getting viral is I wanted to be able to kind of quickly deploy topologies, and I haven't used this. But one real promise of viral is the auto net kit. You know, the auto net kit will let you pretty much pick a topology and automatically deploy BGP or EIGRP, MPLS, things like that. I have not used that yet, but if I were doing proof of concept labs. I could see that being a real time saver uh, and a handy feature, right? Um, still doing the upgrade. Uh, Simon Knight about the auto net kit. Yeah, so. Yeah, it sounds really good, and I thought I might be using it, building labs, but to be honest, um, uh, INE provided uh, to the public, and it's linked here, guys. You can always go to this. They have a GitHub site for viral. So since I discovered how to use this, in fact, you can add this GitHub into viral. And basically, they built all the simulations for you if you're using the INE workbook. So, you know, I haven't had to really build anything on my own, uh, except for one. I've done a proof of concept lab for... I've done a couple. I've done a couple labs where I built my own. But in those cases, I did not want to use um, Auto Net Kit. I actually had some configurations um, already that I could just plug into, into the config. Let's check on our vinstall upgrade here. The log. Okay, yeah, it's, it's done... It's been working. The last time we checked in, we were way up here. Good deal. In 25 seconds. It's working, folks. Um, where was I? I was back on the, the learning site. It's probably get too many browsers open. So yeah, um, at this stage, guys, we're just kind of waiting on this to finish. And which someone warned me about on Twitter. They're like, hey, you're going to stream a viral upgrade. You're pretty much going to sit there. Uh, if you're doing in place, you're going to sit there and watch. Um, one thing I can talk about while this is uh, still running is my progress. This is something, uh, guys, if you don't follow the stream yet, uh, you'll see that uh, I try to, my stream schedule is generally Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights. 
and the weekend it varies now if i'm laughing um i tend to do an hour or two each night um and then on the weekends it could be a week it could vary a lot like i may do just one lab on a sunday or i may lab for 20 hours on a weekend you know so that kind of depends on what i have going on irl right but what i'm working on right now and i still try to vlog uh, while i'm working on the written i'm basically studying uh, these topics so this is the um, written topic checklist that is in the google drive share but essentially it is all the um, blueprint topics spelled out and what i've done is i've gone through here and rated all of them a b and c and c are ones that either i did not have not really studied much at all or i've studied and i was very weak or did not know the topic well and I've marked those as C. Now I've been going through these systematically. By the way, this is uh, every you know 92. Every there's a countdown here to June 10th. But lately, what I've been doing is uh, every night I just kind of come on since there's not really much to show on the stream. Uh, oh, I appreciate that FTD uh, time zone. So what I do is um, I stream live on Twitch. I used to stream live on YouTube. So what I do now is I stream live on Twitch and upload to YouTube. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of documenting the journey, you know. And part of the intent of doing this, um, creating the Land Tamer stream, was to connect with other engineers who are studying and maybe find, you know, study partners. And also to just document my journey. It's kind of an accountability mechanism, you know. I've told people I'm going to stream in these time slots and provide updates. So you know what? Seven o'clock each night, I'm like, uh, I need to be on stream updating everyone. Where am I? Even though I don't feel like it, I'm going to do it, you know? Um, and it has really helped me a lot. So yeah, uh, after I stream, uh, as you'll notice here, like uh, I'm, I'm running um, OBS to stream. And I'm also capturing uh, into a file. So later I upload the file to YouTube right after I'm done streaming. So yeah, if you can't tune in, I appreciate that because the time zones. Um, you can watch all the streams on YouTube as well. You can watch them on Twitch. Um, I don't have a level of account yet where, like, I think they go away after like 15 days or something. Uh, the videos on Twitch. But you can always go back to YouTube and watch them. Well, yeah, this is what I'm doing now. I'm going through, and uh, the last two days, I haven't vlogged since, um, I think, like Thursday night or something, or Wednesday night. But since then, I've covered several topics. So what I did is, for all the Cs, I determined, do I have videos for this? Um, like, I do have a lot of videos for, for, uh, through INE. And then as I cover them, I mark them off. So I did do um, IGMP. Actually, I did not, this did not cover, this video did not cover snooping. So that's going to be Cisco Docs. It didn't do filter or proxy, really. Yeah, we, this didn't cover snooping at all. So I'm finding the videos don't cover a lot of these in-depth topics on the blueprint. Auto RP, BSR, yes, that was covered in a video yesterday. So I'm marking that off. Bidirectional PIM, source-specific multicast, uh, multicast boundaries, intro domain M. I'm not checking, removing these as C's yet. I'm just checking that I've covered these. Uh, the videos did not cover IPv6 multicast, although it did say, so this is going to have to be Cisco Docs too. Um, what else have I covered? Not covered that. Not covered PF, uh, IPFRR. Uh, this is going to have to be Cisco Docs as well. I'm getting down to more and more just going to have to read on these subjects.
Uh, IP, yeah, I have not found anything on that in the INE videos. I did do get VPN, so that was good. There was a video for that. Six to four tunneling was really not covered, so. We covered some of these security topics uh, yesterday. Yep, the HCP snooping was covered, source guard. Dynamic ARP inspection. How are we doing on that? Good. Now it's running Docker, viral.docker. Great. Get this log over here. Move this up here. Um, what else? Um, ACLs. Yes, that was covered. RPF for Unicast. Uh, yes, that was covered in a video. ARIA guard, ESP guard, binding table. Yes, device tracking, snooping, source guard. That's going to have to be Cisco Docs. Cisco Docs running common.proxy. Okay, good. Uh, EAP 802.1x, EAP radius. Yeah, that was covered in a video. That was covered as well. Yeah, get VPN is nice. Um, I couldn't really see if you wanted to DMVPN. I couldn't even see that being practical for a really, really large orga organization or enterprise. You would almost have to do, you know, um, get VPN. They covered it well, too, in the video, I thought. And guys, just so you know, I am checking off, like, the fact that I'm saying I and he didn't cover this, it doesn't mean that they, you know... I. INE doesn't, you know, I'm not sponsored by INE. I've paid them a good bit of money, right, for their workbook. I've paid them money for the videos. I have downloaded a ton of videos from their site. Um, so I should probably kill that back up. We don't really need that right now. In fact, let me uh, disconnect this drive so it doesn't... Just did a backup this morning, so. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of their videos. And um, I've mainly been going through the written. So when I say they don't have a video for this, what I mean is, obviously they cannot, it'd be difficult to be able to do a checklist for every single item in the blueprint. But their videos have hit most of these, right? And I'm not even really talking the advanced technology videos because, you know, they have a written series, which is this. But they also have the advanced technology, which goes deep. This is for labbing. And where I have not found videos to cover a written topic, I have gone in and oftentimes found them covered in as a labbing or advanced technologies topic. But... Um, Anyway, SNMP, have not seen that in the written videos. Uh, conditional debug, they have talked about that. Yeah, I covered that one. Yes, timestamps was covered in the written video. QoS has not been covered yet. That is probably the next series of videos I'm going to do today. Yep, that's probably what I'm going to do today, folks, is the QoS. Uh, redundancy using IP6, uh, have not covered that yet. Not covered that yet. Slack DHCP interaction, we have covered that. Have covered that, have covered that. Uh, we have not covered NAT. Oh, what happened here? Um... Total states run, total run time, salt screen key is not valid, done. All right, so what's it saying here, guys? 
Okay, good. We've moved. Uh, looks like we've pretty much done the upgrade, the vinstall upgrade. Uh, now it's kicking out uh, VM Maestro. So it's setting up a build for me, looks like, for VM Maestro. Oh, thank you, FTD. Yes, I will say um, I'm a big fan of Dimitri. Um, typically, I host his stream. So if someone were to go to my page and he and I'm not up, uh, yes, <laughs> with a big vendor with a capital C and Isco. <laughs> Dimitri, I'm a huge fan of Dimitri. In fact, uh, he's you know we pretty much. Firmed up that we are going, definitely going to meet at Cisco Live and do a selfie. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for the, the call out the good. And, and I definitely promote his stream wherever I can. He, he's a great streamer. Uh, in fact, I'm a subscriber to his channel. But, yeah, guys, if you want to see, you know, I'm not into uh, programming yet for networking. For that, you definitely want to check out Dimitri's stream. And... uh it doesn't hurt to. I'm going to go ahead and link him again since he got a, uh, a very honorable mention here. I'm going to put him in the sort of quote unquote show notes here. Dimitri Fiegel's, um Networking Programmability Stream. I always try to plug uh, Dimitri wherever I can, man. He's He's. He's been very supportive of this channel too. As a matter of fact, um, FTD, when I've been labbing and had trouble, like with some of the MPLS uh, labs, he's he's been in the chat and uh, helped me fix problems with my lab, which is is great. He's he's such a good uh, supporter of the networking community, um, and he has uh, I really like because he has a lot of experience uh, having worked at TAC, and he's a pro at like troubleshooting. Um, yeah, he's a really nice, nice guy, too, on top of everything else. It's where you get somebody where they're knowledgeable. You know, they're an expert, and they're actually nice people and very helpful, you know. But that he's all that one package. Um, yeah, so Nat have not covered yet really in depth, uh, nor the IPSLA, so I need to get into that soon. I was thinking about doing a sandbox, but I'm not really confident yet on stream. Well, man, really, um, you know, if you wanted to, um, I, I really want to see a lot more streamers in the networking field. I don't, really don't think there are enough. So I would encourage you to try it out. Um, you know, if you didn't want to use a webcam in the beginning, if you just use a mic, that's the main thing, the mic. That's the most important uh, piece of equipment, really. And, um, you know, but use a headset or something if you wanted to. And OBS is free. Um, I have, you know, everything I'm using is linked uh, on my page. But uh, just go for it, man. You'd be surprised. And whether you realize it or not, you'd be encouraging someone else to get on stream and get involved in the community. And what has happened for me has been a big benefit is the people I've met on stream. Uh, I also, when I started this stream, I started an Instagram account, Twitter account, and I've met, I've met some really cool people even through Instagram, promoting the stream, etc. And uh, if you want to meet some other engineers, uh, definitely check out our Discord channel, because uh, I don't know if you're familiar, if you're a gamer, familiar with Discord and Twitch, but uh, I've got it up now. We've got, we've actually have pretty robust conversations going on this morning about where people are at. Uh, you know, anytime you have an issue with, um, your labbing environment or something like that, uh, check out the discord and you can post something there and people will jump in and help, etc. So it's not just a channel, it's a community that we've, you know, been kind of building, but, but it's easy to do, man. Not, not hard to get started. And I will say at first, when I started streaming on YouTube, it's been in June, I think it'll be a year. Um, it's very intimidating. Um, it can be, but it's not that hard. It's really not that hard, man. And, um, 
you know, even if no one's watching, which has frequently been the case for me, still the fact, uh, if nothing else, the fact that you are explaining what you're doing, a couple things are going to happen. One, you're going to find out how well you do or don't know that topic, right? Because if you sit there and try to explain to the world on stream and you don't know the topic, that's okay. Learn while you're on stream, you know, and people will sometimes chime in and point you to the links or places to help you figure it out. But uh, if you sort of know, know the topic and you start explaining on, on stream as you're working through a lab or building a lab, um, the mere fact that you're vocalizing and explaining it will, you're teaching yourself, you know. And Dimitri actually had a really good post about this. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to find it quickly. Um, maybe I will be. Let's see. If you're considering um, streaming, let me see. He's in a few of these mentions here. But he had a really cool link. Yes, here it is. Here's his streaming experience. So if you're looking to get pumped, definitely check out that link. He has a blog about his experience and how it has, it been, how it has benefited him. Oh, you're very welcome. So I'm going to put that here, his stream and blog about streaming. And to be honest, I mean, you see, you've seen streaming really take off in entertainment. Um, you're seeing it kind of take off, too, in a lot of other ways. But live streaming, man, I think it's just going to continue to blow up. We're going to see more and more people doing it. And we've only just tapped into the potential of what it can do to, uh, to build communities and um, get people together, you know. Yeah, evolving technologies, man. I went through this. I read the entire, um, and this is Nick Russo's evolving technology guide, which is linked in our Discord as well. Uh, or it's in, you know, you can do a search in the Discord channel and find the link to that, or search Google. Uh, but I read through that entire thing, so I've covered all those topics. So these are starting to get narrowed down, which is good. So I think the next thing I'm going to do, and I'll show you guys how I do it on stream now that I've kind of identified what I'm going to be doing the rest of this weekend, um, is I'm going to grab these videos and put them in iTunes because what I do a lot of is um, I will put them under home videos. And then I can watch them in the living room uh, from Apple TV, right? But let's find the written topic here for QoS. Yeah. One video. That's okay. That might be all I need for the written. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and add this to the home video. There are a lot of other uh, QoS videos under the Advanced Technologies course, though. And I may have to do some of those as well. Uh, what is that under? Convergence Optimization. Here it is. Infrastructure Services QoS. Yeah, this has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, what the heck? I'm just going to add these anyway. Uh, what I typically do to a lot of folks is, let's say I have to go grocery shopping later, for example. Or to the store. Or go change the oil. Um, what I'll do sometimes also is copy these like to my iPad. Or my phone. And you can do that through iTunes. Um, so let's see what else can we talk about we've, we've, we've covered um, the upgrade
Yeah, just uh, to mention something else for anyone who might, may or may not be, be new to the channel, uh, I'm going to show you the YouTube page. I did one of these for Viral 1.3 as well, and that's one thing about this channel I'm going to try to do is, uh, hey, new subscriber, all right, um, is, let me go to the video, uh, show you the videos here. Um, so what I've tried to do is we've got, I, I've got some playlists here. Well, most of these videos are broken down into basically, uh, logs or, um, they're going to be vlogs or labs. So I've got some playlists that you can sort through. IPsec, even VPN, MPLS, BGP, viral stuff. Like, th these videos will be added to viral stuff. Hey, we got a... Thanks, Jumpy, for subscribing. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I think that is a YouTube subscriber. Um, yeah, basic routing, switching, OSPF, vlogs. And I need to update these. There's a lot more vlogs, actually, in here. RIP and EIGRP. And hey, thank you, FTD. Appreciate that, my friend. Yeah, you can uh, get you can turn your notifications on too, and see when the when uh, videos get posted, things like that. Of course, um, some other uh, resources is Discord, and that's one of the main things uh, that has been a benefit, at least to me, coming out of the. And I'll just show you the Discord channel. Or the server. And any of you have done gaming or stream, do you know what Discord is? It's like a um, a Spark or a Slack. But it's for the gaming world. And one thing that distinguishes it is, I think, and one of the reasons I wanted to do just a Discord channel instead of just a regular uh, Slack channel is because of the audio. The audio is really good. And we've had... No one has really wanted to jump on at least... Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Um, no one has really jumped on too often to do audio, but at some point I want to do a collaborative labs or maybe collaborative builds. And the audio is great with Discord. Um, it's very efficient. And most gamer, you know, you typically find that when a lot of gamers, whatever technology they use, it's going to be low latency. In other words, fast. Because gamers like fast and stable. So gamers tend to swear by the audio channels that you can set up in Discord. And that's why I did a Discord uh, server. But we've got several channels here. Uh, I do generally stream update announcements. Labbing is, can be a very bu busy channel. Uh, vlog topics, anything you want to see me talk about or vlog about, you can put in there. Fun stuff. Um, you know, people just kind of a social channel. Um, Links. These are links people can post that they think are cool or share shareable. I will post links in here usually every day, every other day. And then the ones that I think are good meat chunks, as I call them, for the um, for the uh, vlog, I'll I'll put them in in the agenda. Cisco Live. We've got a lot of discussion about that right now. Uh, streaming tech. This is about if you want to stream, if you're interested in streaming technology gear software uh we talk about that on here and then of course this is for any issues you might be having with viral eve or gns3 uh, we talk about it there so hey good to see you segvolted good to have you my friend so yeah that's um and i generally i tend to leave notifications off um during the stream but sometimes in the day if you post a question or something i'll see it in there and, and play around with it uh, some of the other resources, those are the main ones, YouTube and, and Discord. But, uh, of course, I got Twitter, and I tend to post. Uh, when I'm labbing, I, I post usually once a day. Uh, yeah, usually once a day I'll post something. And uh, same, I tend to post the same things, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. But here's our Google Drive share. If you've not seen this yet on the channel, uh, by the way, our install is going well here. It looks like the VM Maestro has been done for three different clients. We've got two left, OS 10 and, and local. Uh, but on the um, Google Drive share, 
these are the agendas and pretty much everything I've all vlogs and everything are in here. The links are included there, etc. Like you see me do it on the screen. I did a few uh, blogs for packet pushers. Those are there. Uh, important links are basically my YouTube about page packet captures. So we have a lot of generally when you see me labbing and, and capturing packets, um, I'll share them with the stream in case you want to see them on your own as well. And I'll come back to them sometimes. It's kind of a catalog of lab pack, pack PCAPs that you can come back to. And sometimes when I'm studying these technologies, I'll come back and, and look at those PCAPs as well. Uh, these are just some screenshots of what Boson looks like. Uh, this is what I do for Boson. You're probably familiar with it, but if you're studying for CCI written, this is a great resource. Um, I think it's like 120 bucks, um, but it's, I swear by it. And these are kind of what it looks like. Um, yeah, sample questions. But some screenshots are in there. And then this is a written topic checklist that I just had pulled up. Uh, these are areas I need to work on. This is lab topics. I haven't been to this in a while, but I just saw everyone in the stream while we're waiting on viral to finish. This is my schedule for doing the labs in the INE workbook. So as you can see through a first run, I've done 63% of them. And my projected finish date right now is August 1st. Uh, that's gonna keep pushing back because I'm not doing labs right now. I'm studying for the written for the next 90 some odd days. But yeah, this is this is everything from the workbook. My next lab will be, you know, I'm in multicast for labbing. I've done IPsec, MPLS, BGP, OSPF, EIGRP, RIP, etc. Um, basic lab setup, hardware, software, studio gears, etc. That's linked below. CLI shortcuts. So these are different things I'm working on, like TCL scripts and just kind of things I'm practicing at the CLI, trying to get used to, et cetera. And then book list. Uh, as I've hit different sections in the lab, um, I try to find a book for that section. Like BGP, this is my go-to book. And these are in Safari Books Online. Uh, for MPLS, this is my go-to book, et cetera. Um, this is not just a dump list of books that I've read. I've read other books than this. Um, but this is just, as I hit these more complex sections, these are my go-to books for those. A copy of the blueprint itself, which you can get online, of course. And this has been sort of my written plan to tackle the, uh, the written. And this has changed, but this is still pretty much the same. So, um, that is a Google Drive share. Uh, the other two links I put in every stream are pretty much this one. So this is publicly available. You know, I don't show the things I buy that are copyright. Obviously, I'm not showing those on, on stream. But this is publicly available, the, the, the diagrams for the CCNI Route Switch workbook. Um, yeah, those are available publicly, as well as the GitHub. I showed this earlier. But if you actually want to see, now this doesn't have the lab exercises, the lab answers, of course. But these are the actual viral files that show how the topologies are built for the INE uh, labs. And this is what I pull down. When I kick off a lab, for example, for PPP, I'm pulling it down off the GitHub. And this basically shows the encoding, and then these are the routers and switches and how they're configured for that lab. Okay, yes, good deal. The system must now reboot to complete the upgrade. Once completed, return the system to operation by disabling maintenance mode. Here we go. I blame Twitch for not finding you sooner. Good stuff, though. Sadly, well above most of the kids on Twitch, but basically what I do during the day. Me too, man. To be honest, I'd love to say that during a working day that I am watching INE videos or something, you know, uh, I do watch, um, I do listen to some podcasts during the day. 
unless it's something I need to really pay, you know, I try to play it in the background. Like I'll play um, Network, Network Collective or Packet Pushers. Um, or Dimitri's, you know, uh, Twitch stream. Um, but when I really need to concentrate, I, I tend to just, I'll play games on Twitch. Like I'll watch Ninja and, and people like that. Um, but yeah, I actually started out on YouTube. It's only recently that I've been on Twitch. Uh, but yeah, I understand. I, I love watching gamers. I love Twitch. Like I've been on Twitch. I remember when it was Justin.tv. And I used it then, um, but I, I'm I'm pretty much a Twitch addict. Okay, that's done. Uh, now let's go over to let's look at our virtual machine here. Watch and reboot. My viral um, virtual machine name is still 1.3.296, but I'm okay with that. I could probably change the name or at least, if nothing else, I know that the OVA was deployed um, using this particular version. Okay, all right, let's see if we can log in. We wanna make sure we use Chrome. Okay, we're logged in already. So I'm going to go back to the main login page. Okay, it's probably still loading up. Just because we get a login screen here, of course, does not mean that the UWM is loaded. Yep, still unreachable. I listen to a lot of YouTube as well during the during the work day. There's some really great channel uh, YouTube channels. Guys, I'm going to show you while this is loading up. Hopefully, this is not uh, going to take us too long here. In the Brave browser over here, I'm going to load uh, show you some of my YouTube subscriptions and talk about those. Yeah, so I'm sub to uh, uh, shoot. Okay, here we go. So yeah, Pack of Pushers. They're starting to do some video, which I like. There was a good video here by Greg Farrow uh, about BGP, <clears throat> and I linked that. Of course, uh, Dimitri has one. Uh, Dylan Aharo, if you're not subscribed to him, he's a pretty regular vlogger as well. He's working on CCI Route Switch like me, and he's vlogging. I think he's, um, might be in Australia or, or somewhere like that. Uh, Tony E is a good, uh, he's got some good videos. Um, David Bombau is probably the best networking YouTube channel there is. So if you have not, checked him out uh he he's also part of the gns3 community big part of the gns3 community and uh you'll definitely want to check out his channel if you don't have a network collective they have moved of course they're now on um what are the competing platform name is i forget uh but yeah cisco viral Catherine mcnamara she's on here sometimes but what she does if you're into security um, she doesn't post as often, but she has some good stuff in there. And then, um, Narbic, of course, those are some of the ones that I, I highly recommend. Let's see how Viral's doing here. What's, okay, let's see if the UWM will load in Chrome. David, that's the end course? Yeah, I plan to do that too. When I, after CCI route switch, I'm definitely going to be checking out some, some Bombal. Is that the issue? Okay, it wants me to go to, that's fine. We'll go to the IP address. 
I created a host file for that. Okay, good deal. Um, so let's go to our documentation here. Uh, post upgrade. Do not run health checker system. Just click finish upgrade. Okay. Yeah, I made that mistake before. Yeah, glad to know you recommend that, uh, FTDL. Definitely going to check that out. So CPU utilization is pretty high right now. Release, it says 1.3. I'm not going to worry too much about that yet because I think that is expected at this point. Finish upgrade prompts. I think I have to, I have to go on there here. Yes, these are built on my Mac. Um, I do not have a dedicated system. Okay, I think I needed to come here. Yeah, I'm using... Um, let me just show you real quick. Yeah, and my, to be honest, my Mac is not a, um, an extreme, it's, it's getting on up in age, so it's not the fastest. But yeah, I'm running this in, uh, VMware Fusion Pro, and I have, of course, Win Windows 7 VM, I have this viral VM, GNS3, and EVNG in my library right now. Okay, so we need to go to, do not run health check or system operate. Just finish upgrade. Okay, I did not see that option. Move this out. Do not run health check or system operation check. Just click finish upgrade. Well, I don't really have that option. Okay, that went green. And follow prompts to take the system out of maintenance mode. Uh, here we go. Okay. Good, we got a progress window back. Press to complete upgrade. Complete, green. This release, ah, uh, there we go. We got a green check mark. Whew, right guys, I think we are now upgraded. Everything here is green, okay? So it says afterwards, uh, navigate to Varl Server System Tools. And run System Operation Check. And HELT. HELT Check. Oh, we're not running any simulations, so we can start testing. Yeah, so far the uh, interface, the UWM is looking pretty good. Almost a little more crisp, a little more, um, to me, a little more responsive, I think. I was always afraid in the old UWM of, like, a crashing or something sort of being out of place, some of the text. But each version, each upgrade has gone a little better, a little smoother, I think. Running simulation tests. Okay, good. So far, very smooth, guys. Smooth upgrade. 
I'm trying to remember if 1.3, I think 1.3 was a, you know, when I went from 1.2 to 1.3, I think I did a full install, to be honest. I do not remember. I have to, I'd have to go back. I streamed that, so uh, it's on YouTube. To look at that again. Creator Studio. Yeah, the last... I have to say, um, the last upgrade did not go this well. And I know we're not done yet, but... I'm trying to find that video here. Oh, where'd you go, Brave? Um... Well, they're all going to say viral, aren't they? Let's do 1.3. Yeah, so this is September 11, 2017. Okay, yeah, this one is the first attempt. This is August 24th. And it did not go well. It was, it was almost two hours. I did an initial reaction and thoughts video, of course. Then I did an upgrade on stream and I had issues. I got those working uh, the next day. And I did a vlog about that. Went through a few install caveats on tip. Yeah. So I can't remember. I have to go back and see how I did that. But... I have to say, uh, after 1.3 was installed, I did do later some switching videos and they all, or laps, and they all worked great. Fail so far 11, skip 2, total 16, running simulation tests. So it wants us to run a system operation check and a health check. I notice this bar kind of moving. Finished. Okay. And it looks like we passed. So let's go back to system tools. Check health status. I think it was 1.3 that they started adding the, like these big icons. And I like it. It works. I'll have to figure out what's going on with my host file for viral. Because right now, let's see. Uh, what's this? Proxy? Proxy is disabled. That's fine. We don't need a proxy. Okay, that looks good. So next, we're ready to use it. All right, so going back to my plan here, my written plan, is a validation checklist. Uh, I wanted to come back. There was something bolded here. UWM new tab. Let's take a look at these new tabs. Under system configuration. Okay, yeah, there are, looks like there are some new tabs here. Cisco call home, that's interesting. And I'm fine with that. I want to help make the product better. 
Remote connections. Interesting. Hardware. Oh, here's the overcommit multiplier. CPU is six. I thought it was supposed to be three by default. Is that because of multiple processors? I'm not sure. Level three snap, service ports, users. Okay, so yeah, some uh, changes here. It looks like open VPN. That's cool. Enable open VPN server so you can remote connect into your vir viral uh, configuration. Uh, configure scroll bars to always show and system preferences general. I can't remember. That may have been in the... Yeah, that that's in the um, via Maestro. All right, so images are upgraded. Let's check our images. Uh, where is that now? Saw configuration, system configuration, system upgrade, viral software. I think that's here. Yeah. Okay, so viral core is done. Here we go. There's where we need to do some. So the main one I'm interested in is iOS V. This is the one I want to install. Um, I do the Ubuntu server too. I uh, might as well do ASAV. Let's go ahead and upgrade all of them. 15.6. Yeah, this is the one I knew about, iOS V, that we're getting upgrade 15.6.2 to 15.6.3. Yep. Start installation. Please wait. You'll be able to check for updates once the above upgrades finish and get confirmed. Okay, I don't think we need to wait for that to do the um, to upgrade via Maestro. So I'm going to open another instance here. This is that impatience I was talking about before. Um, I think it's under viral server download. Yeah. And VM Maestro DMG. That's the one we want. And it should be interesting to see, yeah, VM Maestro 1.3. Let's uh, open our applications because it doesn't automatically install it into your apps. Copying. OK, 
Okay, VM Maestro 1.3, here's 1.5. So let's see what happens, guys. Images are going okay. Yeah, this is if I ping viral. Okay, I, I probably need to update that host file. Um, I think I need to be a pseudo user here. Oh yeah, just Etsy. Okay. Make this one to forty here. One forty. Okay, cool. Well, it's so verifying cannot be uh shoot how do i fix that i think i have to do that and then i get the option Takes a while to verify that, doesn't it? We'll put only those at once. Close some windows here. Verifying VM Maestro 1.5. What does this say? Oh, it's just bouncing. It's just waiting. Do 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 do. Yes, open. Good, that image just finished. Oh, are you launching or? Put that here. 
until we know this works, I'm leaving it, the other one in the... Wow, yeah, that's taking a while. There we go. Hopefully that's just the first time. Or maybe that's because we're also doing this in, you know, update. Pull up our activity monitor, see what's happening here. Oh yeah, shoo. Taking a lot of the CPU. Yeah, hopefully this is indicative of just the first time run because otherwise that's... <laughs> okay, cool. Hey, we're in, guys. Yeah, this was some testing I was doing. Good deal. Um, I don't expect to see a lot new in here. Uh, there was one thing I wanted to change. Yeah, I have an SSD and a regular um, non-SSD drive, but uh, the SSD is kind of, it's supposed to be a balanced, you know, kind of configuration. Like the Mac figures out where it's supposed to, to store. It's a hybrid, yeah, hybrid SSD. Okay, so <clears throat> configure scroll bars to always show. <clears throat> and again, this is, I think, specific to uh, Mac users. System preferences general. Um, I don't see, is that under appearance? Scroll bars always show. System preferences is general. <clears throat> Can I search? That's cool. I can, but I don't see what they're talking about. Um, let me double check where that was. Let me open the caveats. Oh, this is just if you're in VM Maestro 1.28 build 474. What build are we in? 150. Okay, so we don't care about that. Yeah, I'm not sure why, you know, I may have done this once in the past, but I'm not sure why you would use an older build of VM Maestro on a newer version of viral server. But I'm sure it's there because people do it. Okay, so, so far so good. I just want to test though. Let's cancel quit. Yeah, I don't want to shut down the server. It may try to do that. Yeah, we'll leave it up until the until these finish. This is currently running. Um, let's see. Is there anything that I see here? Appearance, oh, you got the different themes. I think that was there before. Yeah. I always like the dark theme stuff. Um, interesting that they have appearance here, but there's a sub menu under that. 
Uh, compare patch, content types, editors, globalization keys, network connections. web browser again I, don't, I really don't use a lot of this because node subtypes after downloading a package to check for application oh, okay prompt Uh, if you're using team, interesting. Terminal. I don't know that I like this menu and then a sub menu of that's that can be a little confusing. Huh, right. I don't know what those are. Oh, that's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Maybe that's why I didn't have it that way before. Let's go back to appearance, uh, Mac. Okay, that's a little better. It does look like a Mac. This is one of the topologies I had created here. Okay, utilization has gone down. Um, wait, do we have simulations running? I would hope not. Let me double check though. I'm gonna log in. Uh, let's try viral this time too. Viral. Uh, my, let's see. Oh, you know what? I can't see them unless I'm logged in as a guest. Okay, guys, I'm not going to play with that right now. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll just see under... Our server. Hope it would show running simulations, but it doesn't. Okay. All right, guys. Well, um, it looks to me like everything is pretty much working. Um, it's about my lunchtime, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the stream right here. Um, what's going to happen is the rest of this is basically we're going to wait for this image to download. And then once it downloads, uh, I'm not sure how long this is going to take. So once these download, uh, or finish downloading. I'm going to leave this up and running while I get lunch. And then I'm going to come back and just launch a simulation in both. 
and then I'm going to assume that this is going to work. By what I can tell for right now, it, it all is. Um, we haven't had any issues so far, except I will say uh, follow up issue load time for VM Maestro. That's one thing I, th I think I need to check. Other than that, guys, um, I think we're all set. Um, I just want to say, too, uh, thanks for everybody who tuned in and supports uh, supporting the channel. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break here, like I said. Um, I'm going to come back a little later and just double-check those things, but I'm going to say I'm going to call it right here. I think we're, we have a successful upgrade, and I'm looking forward to doing some more labbing here soon. What's going to happen uh, to the stream? Um, I'm going to, um, after confirming this works, I'm going to go back to studying for the written uh, the rest of the weekend. Uh, I may do a vlog uh, tomorrow, just to update on the progress and just to give an update on, you know, the rest of what I found. But if you don't hear from me, uh, if you don't see me come stream this afternoon, that means that everything worked great. Um, if it doesn't, though, I'll be popping up the stream again and we'll either do troubleshooting or do a restore or whatever the case may be but right now i think we can we can call it good so far um you know the finish line is right there so thanks for tuning in folks i really appreciate it uh, appreciate all the support uh enjoyed uh you know talking with everybody here in the community in the chat and uh, again if you haven't yet uh, check us out on discord discussion continues there and happy laughing, guys. Happy, I uh, hope you get all the good bits. And we shall see you again soon here on the Land Tamer stream.